Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This is going to be a new series for circular motion from A2 physics. I'm going to make a playlist and divide the entire circular motion syllabus into a few topics and units and post the videos accordingly. All the links will be given in the description. So if you want to jump around, you can do that. So yeah, let's start with the first topic and which is going to be the basics of circular motion. I'm going to introduce you all with some known and some unknown terminologies and show a few formulas and just give a few refreshes for different things. Okay, so let's start off with a few examples of circular motion. One of which could be a racetrack. There are places where you have to make a circular turn. What does the car do? It moves rightwards, the tires are moved rightwards, and the car gets to make this arc. Why is it that the car is able to travel in this circular motion without traveling off in a linear direction? Similarly, I believe a lot of us have seen this example being demonstrated to us where you take a half-filled uh, water bottle and try to rotate it vertically uh, and try to make sure that the water does not spill out of the water bottle. Now, in this demonstration, you will see that you need a very specific speed to turn the water bottle around, without which, if you try to rotate it any slower, the water is going to spill out. Why is that the case? Why does speed matter? Why is it? the water is able to stick at the bottom of the bottle no matter what you do, no matter how you rotate it. So we're going to look into the factors, the forces that affect the circular motion and results in this specific odd behavior. So we're going to start off with the first idea, which is, which is um, angular displacement. Angular Displacement. In circular motion, we don't use we don't necessarily use the notion of arc length, which you might be familiar with, but we more often use the term angular displacement to describe how far along you've come across in a circular path. Let's say this is the circle, this is the center of the circle, and there, there is radius r. Now, the angle subtended the center will be called theta, theta. And this theta is the angular displacement. Considering points A and B, the arc length is going to be this, S. S represents the arc length. So the distance on the circle or the part of the circumference that is traveled is S. But we are not using arc length to describe or mention or denote the displacement. What we are using is the theta, the angular displacement. So um, you might be familiar with the equation S is equals to R theta for radians only. Because for degrees, it's a different equation where S is equals to theta or the angle, angular displacement by 360 times 2 by R. Where this is the ratio of angle and this is the circumference. So you're multiplying the ratio, the ratio with the circumference to get the part of the arc or the part of the circumference that is channeled. Anyways, this is not required over here. We need to work with this formula. Now, since I've already mentioned that this formula is applicable for when you're dealing in radians. So we need to uh, understand what radians really is. You might already know that pi rad 
is 180 degrees. This is a well-established equation. This is pi on 180 degrees. Half the circle or half the revolution is always pi or 180 degrees. If you know that, let's divide each side with pi, pi red, pi red divided by You're left with, you're left with 1 is equals to 180 by pi, which is approximately, so 1 red is approximately um, 57.3 degrees. So, this is the value of 1 rad in degrees, which is going to be about this much, 57.3 degrees or 1 rad. Now, why do we need the term rad or radians? And where does it come from? Where does it come from? So let's define what rad is. Um, let's take a sector. Let's take a sector and say this is theta and this is radius which is going to be let's say one meters. One meters. Now here comes the interesting part which is s is also equals to one meters. Why is this important or interesting? Because under these conditions, where the radius and the arc length is equal, only then the angle subtended at the center is going to be 1 rad. Considering that the radius and the arc length is equal, only then the angle at the center is going to be 1 rad. And this is always true. They have defined 1 rad as in the situation where one uh, or any value of radius is equals to the value of the arc length. So if x is the radius, x should also be the arc length. So in a circle, in a circle, if the radius is x, the arc length, the distance, this distance should also be x. Under those conditions, the value of theta is going to be 1 rad. So if we take another example, if we take another example, over here, if r is 2, r is 2, and r length is 2, what will that angle be? What will theta be? It's going to be 1 rad, not 2 rad, 1 rad. So what is the condition for uh, having one rad, it is the radius will be equal to the arc length. Okay, so let's write the definition. It is the angle subtended at the center Therefore, you will get a value of 1 rad when the arc length equals to the radius. Okay. So, that's it about radians. Now, since we are already known to the term 
radiance or angular displacement, we can move on to the next part, which is going to be which is going to be angular velocity. So initially I was talking about this example where you're trying to rotate a bottle in a vertical plane. And in this case, we're not going to necessarily use the term speed or velocity to describe the motion of the water bottle or the car. What do we use? We use angular velocity to describe how fast an object is moving in a circular path. Okay, so angular velocity. The sign or symbol for angular velocity is omega, is omega. Okay. So what is angular velocity? As I said, it is used to describe how fast an object is moving in a circular plane. So let's see, in this circle, in this circle, um, this is, let's say one rad, one rad, and an object, object travels from A to B. This object is traveling from A to B. So what will it do? It is taking a time of, let's say, two seconds. Two seconds. To do what? It is taking two seconds to travel from point A to point B. So, the arc length, it's traveling the arc length of one radiance in these, in these conditions in two seconds. So, let's say the radius is one one, and it's traveling the arc length in two seconds. What is the angle? One rad. So, to travel one rad, how long is it taking? Two seconds. If you divide the angle by the time taken to travel that angle, you get angular velocity, omega. So what is the angular velocity in this case going to be? 0.5 rad per second. Rad per second. Okay. So what you're basically doing is checking for the rate of change of angle. Till now, you've studied the rate of change of displacement, velocity, and in certain cases, accelerations as well. But now you have to learn to use um, angular velocity or rate of change of angle with time. Okay, so let's, let's write the definition. Let's write the definition. It's going to be... Okay, so this is the definition of angular velocity. Um, so if we get back to this equation, let's say um, for omega, omega, which is the rate of change of angular displacement, we're taking it as the change in angle. In this case, we took one rad. The change in angle was one rad. The change in angle, theta, by change in time. Here, the change in time was 2 seconds. 2 seconds. Change in angle by change in time. This gives you omega. Now, if you're talking about an entire oscillation or an entire circle, 
you will have to express it in a different way. So basically, there is another way to represent the same thing as well. Given you have the uh, following information, which is time period. So yeah, you just need this one thing to use this equation, which is 2 pi by t. What does this Let's say t is 2 seconds. An object is going around the circle in 2 seconds. So it's traveling an angle of 2 pi since 360 degrees is 2 pi. So the object is traveling 2 pi in only 2 seconds. So from this, you will get the value of angular velocity. Now let's say you don't know the time period but you're given the following information. An object travels along an arc that is subtend by in 3 seconds. Okay, so if the object travels along the arc subtended by 3 rad at the center of the circle in 3 seconds, what is the angular, dis uh, angular velocity going to be? Omega is going to be 3 rad by 3 second. We're using what? We're using this formula change in angle by change in time. So 3 rad by 3 second is going to be 1 rad per second. 1 rad per second. So if in other cases you have the time period given, then you can easily find out the angular velocity by dividing 2 pi by the time period. So let's say the question says um, an object travels or an object takes 30 seconds to go around a circle or make one full oscillation. What is the angular velocity? You're basically just going to um, divide 2 pi by 30 seconds to get the angular velocity or angular speed. Okay, so that is, that is angular velocity. You either use this or you either use that. Okay. So the next thing is linear or tangential velocity. Okay, for this for this specific circle, if we Take the tangential velocity, which is going to be over here for point A and over here for point B. So, what is base? Uh, what is uh, tangential velocity? It's basically the velocity of the object in any specific point in any specific point. So let's say if the object is at point A, what is the tangential velocity? It is going to be in this direction. Since we are rotating the object anti-clockwise, it's going to travel in a direction tangent to the, to the point of circle on A. So if you release the object, let's say you're trying to trying to rotate this object on a horizontal plane, and if you break the or 
just leave the rope, this object is going to take this direction and travel this path. So, what is the tangential velocity in these cases? I'm going to denote it as this, where this is the vector or velocity, but we take in the modulus of the value, which is speed. So, we are basically dealing with the speed at different positions. So, if you are uh, rotating the object uh, with the same speed, with the same velocity, it's going to have the same speed and same velocity at any point on the circumference or on the path of the circle. Therefore, we can say that if S is r theta and we are trying to look for we are trying to look for the velocity or the speed of the object we can bring in we can bring in time on either side of the equation and take the derivative on both sides so basically you're calculating the change in displacement by change in time. And you're doing the same on this side where you're trying to find out the change in angle by change in time. Where S is the arc length. Where S is the arc length. So the reason you can take S over here, although this is an arc, is because for really big circles and for really small angles, the arc length is almost linear. It's not curved. If you take, let's say, for example, this sector, if you take this arc and compare it to the linear displacement, it is almost same. So for small changes in arc or small um, value of arc length, it is going to be equal to the displacement between the two points, which is why you can call this change in displacement by change in time, which is going to be velocity, and it's going to equal to change in time, uh, sorry, change in angle by change in time, which is going to be omega. So V is equals to R omega. This is a new equation. So there's actually a pretty interesting demonstration of angular velocity and um, tangential, tangential velocity. In this case, um, you can see there are two objects with two different radius and two different circumference to cover. So, even though both of these have the same angular velocity, the tangential velocity is very different. Now, why is that the case? Why is it that the tangential velocity are not the same? So, um, let's say the blue, the blue object has a radius of radius of 2 meters and the pink object has a radius of 1 meters. If that's the case, the circumference is going to be wildly different. The circumference is going to be wildly different. If the circumference equals to 2 pi r, so for the pink object, the circumference is 2 pi. And for the blue object, the circumference is going to be 2 pi times 2, which is going to be which is going to be 4 pi. So, the blue object has to cover double the distance compared to the pink object within the same time because their uh, omega or angular velocity is the same. So, they're traveling together. They're traveling together and covering 
the same uh, same amount of angle within the same time. So their time periods are the exact same. So if they have to cover a larger circumference within the same time, obviously their tangential velocity or velocity in these directions, in these directions, tangent to their motion or the point on circle is going to be much higher because they have to travel a larger distance compared to the pink circumference. This is why even though you may have, you may have the same angular velocity, you might have a different, a different equation or a different, sorry, a different value for tangential velocity. So if let's say V is equals to R omega, if we want to prove it by equation, if omega is same and omega is constant, it does not change. If you're changing R, if you increase R, the tangential velocity will increase as well. So V is proportional to the radius. Therefore, if you increase the radius and keep the same angular velocity, the tangential velocity will increase. 